Ooh, that's a good question. All right, all right. So we're back to the uh, the comment, and we'll see if I can um, answer this without making you question <laughs> why you're even a programmer and why aren't you a farmer and quit your job. Question is, I have over 500,000 documents that I want to instantly search on my website. How do I start architecting? I think I would ask you a bunch of questions. One of the first questions I would ask is, is this a SaaS application? Meaning, is this website something that's available to the public or is this a private thing that is just inside of your company and not exposed anywhere? Related to that, can is outsourcing an option? Could you take these 500,000 documents and send them to a third party and use them to search? Or do you need to keep all of your data inside of your data center? Because that matters. For example, there's a friend of mine who has a software search startup. He has a search company where they run all the search clusters for you and you just point them at the data and hit their API anytime you want to search and away you go. I would probably say that's the simplest way to get started is to use an outsourced search. There's other options that are a little bit more involved. For example, AWS will run Elasticsearch for you. I believe the Elasticsearch company will Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a program that will index data and allow you to search it very quickly. Search for keywords, terms, fuzzy matching, all that kind of stuff that you'd expect out of a search engine. Elasticsearch is probably the most common or popular open source search technology. And it's also one that you can get hosted in multiple places. As I mentioned, AWS, Elasticsearch, the company does it as well. I think a few others do. So if you don't want to give your data to a complete third party, but you want to use something that you could later choose to bring it in house, Elasticsearch might be a great option. Start by having Amazon or Elasticsearch, the company, run your cluster for you. And then if you ever decide that that's not enough, you want to run your own cluster, you can. However, I will say that Elasticsearch can be a pain in the ass to maintain, to administer. It takes a lot of resources. You'll spend a lot more money on it than you think you would, even to have a clustered solution. We at Sleuth use Elasticsearch to handle our indexing needs our searching needs. And we spend probably more money on that cluster than anything else inside of Sloot, the database, the, the analytics, the web layers, and anything. Because it requires a lot of resources, not only to run, but to run in a scalable way. Because what you don't want is to have one box go down and now you can't search things anymore. And so you need to run with a certain level of redundancy and a certain amount of CPU and memory resources so that you can run your searches efficiently. So be prepared to spend money, be prepared to learn how it works. You can't just throw it into an API and expect it just magically work. You do need to understand kind of what's happening in Elasticsearch particularly. You need to be thinking about what day you're indexing and how you're indexing it. You're not gonna index a whole document at once and just say, let's do free text search. You're probably gonna wanna index individual attributes for example, let's say you're indexing books, you might want to create a field for title, another field for abstract, another field for table of contents so that you could search something in each area and perhaps weight it differently. For example, if someone searched for bear, you would want to look inside of the title for the document. And if you see the word bear, that should be scored higher than if the word bear appeared in the abstract or in the table of contents. So you want to think a lot about how you want to structure this document that's going in, as well as how you want to score things and query it on coming out. So Elasticsearch is where I would start. There's other options for searching as well. And again, those are really good for write some and read a lot type workflows. There's a much better way of saying that. But basically, it's where you index these documents and then you don't have to index 500,000 every day, you index them once and then every now and then add a few more, but most of the operations are read operations. They're very optimized well for read operations. It's definitely something you need to know about Elasticsearch. This isn't something where you just say, oh, I installed it or Amazon's running it for it. So it's just gonna work. No, Amazon 
generally speaking, AWS stuff is not the lowest level because you're not running it yourself, but it's right about there. They are, their management API is generally terrible. Um, their visibility into what's happening isn't very good. And you generally have to do all the things yourself. Elasticsearch is interesting. It's one of those that I think if I go back to like major outages where a system failed, almost every outage I can think of, not every, almost every, but most outages, the vast majority, if I had to pick one cause, the one the cause that came up the most would be Elasticsearch cluster fail, where one of the nodes goes down, you're running three nodes and you're thinking, sweet, I'm running three nodes, I'm good, or I'm running two nodes, I'm good. No, you're not. Somehow it has this fight over who's the master and no one responds and it all blows up and the whole cluster goes down and you spend 20 minutes trying to figure out what the hell's going on, trying to reboot it, trying to get things going. Uh, Elasticsearch is really cool, but note that it is not something, it's not a fire and forget. It's not Redis. I'll tell you that. It's not Redis. Redis is one of my favorite pieces of software. It's something that is so simple to run. I run it in a Docker container locally. Its API is super straightforward. It has all these really useful commands. And the thing is fucking bulletproof.